Thank you, thank you. All right. Hopefully I got most of the crying out of the way already. You guys got my mom to talk on tape, which is way cooler than anything I've ever done. So that, congratulations for that. Uh, this is by far the most nervous I've ever felt on this field, so bear with me, please. But uh, what, a, what a day to see kind of all this stuff, all these videos, uh, brings back a lot of memories. It's an honor to be here. And I'll start off by taking some, thanking some people. Uh, Ted and Annette, Mark and Judy, the entire Learner family and the entire ownership group. You have treated me and my family so well since day one, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. You grew and learned throughout the years like all of us, and you did that by listening to the players and making adjustments. You built a first-class organization, and you won a world championship. You should all be very, very proud of that. It was an honor to work for you. All the people behind the scenes that work so hard to make this day possible. Lindsay Norris, Jacqueline Coleman, Sean Bertani, and many, many more. I have known most of you for well over a decade now, and I've enjoyed working with you throughout my career. I truly appreciate all your efforts along the way. <clears throat> now we go back to the beginning, Virginia Beach. It's kind of where real baseball started for me, and I was so lucky to grow up in an area filled with so much talent. I played on the Tidewater Drillers starting at age nine, and the caliber of players I played with and against, along with the coaching I received from guys like Matt Sinnon, Jeff Fox. My dad was a coach on one of those teams. I don't know how much coaching he did, but. You guys taught me how to play the game the right way from the beginning. This gave me the foundation that allowed me to, to become a big leader. St. Clair Jones, who coached me at Kellum High School, he taught me so much during those important years, those really weird years. You handled our group and many after us with class and should be very proud of how you paired all of us for whatever our next step was to be successful. The University of Virginia and the city, city of Charlottesville. Coach O'Connor, Coach McMullen, and Coach Gaze continued my baseball development, but honestly, I think they taught me more about work ethic and the mental toughness side of the game. Going to UVA was the best decision I made and I think one of the main reasons I even made it to the big leagues. Mike Rizzo, who has been here with me pretty much the whole time. I tell everyone I respect the heck out of you because you have always told me the truth, which is hard to find these days. Sometimes it wasn't what I wanted to hear, but you never lied to me. It was so much to be fun to be a part of building a championship team with you. Harolyn Cardoza, who has been basically the team nom and sort of my DC baseball mom for almost 20 years. Thank you for helping me, all my teammates, everyone involved in the organization with so many things on and off the field. You helped me from the time I was a single 21 year old and now a married man with lots of kids. 
you always had the answers, and somehow you always had the time to help everyone. To all of my managers, and I had a lot of them. <laughs> From my very first, Mr. Frank Robinson. who I think is one of the most impressive human beings I've ever met. To my last, Davey. Who is one of the most versatile people I've ever met. You handled every situation with class and you truly care about your players more than anyone I've ever been around. Every single manager that I had, Frank, Davey, all of them, taught me something on and off the field, lots of things, more than one thing, that helped me get to this point. So thank you guys. Thank all of you who took time out to manage me. <clears throat> to all the coaches, the people who do all the work while people like him get all the credit. Your commitment to making me a better player every day will never be forgotten. You all sacrifice time with your families, nine, ten months out of the year, to teach a game that we all love. You helped me become a more complete player, and I would not have had the career I had without all of you. Thank you. <clears throat> the numerous medical teams that helped me stay on the field, I gave you a run for your money. There were days where I really wasn't sure how the heck you got me out there, but you did. And in baseball, you have to play every day. That's how you earn respect. And there is no way I could have done that without all of you guys. Clubhouse staff, you were the first ones there every day and the last ones to leave. When we get back from a road trip early in the morning, or arrive somewhere late at night, you guys still work. I always joked, you had to take care of 25 to 30 prima donna athletes and keep them happy on a daily basis. No thanks. <laughs> Rob McDonald, Mike Wallace, Dan Wan, Andrew Melnick, Greg Melnick, Ryan Weeby, Mike Gordon, Rosie, and many, many more. Thank you all for taking care of me and my family. You guys are the backbone of this team. <clears throat> to all of my teammates, from high school all the way to the big leagues, you were what I missed most about the game. It was so much fun to get to, know, get to know so many different people from all over the world. I learned so much and became such a better person because each and every one of you. We pushed each other to the limit every day, all while trying to achieve the same goal. Some days and some years went better than others, but we are all part of a special fraternity that not many can say they're a part of. Don't ever forget that and don't take it for granted. Enjoy every second of it, because it goes pretty darn fast. <clears throat> to my agents at CAA, Brody Van Wagenen, Jeff Berry, Tom Hagee, Sean Twitty, Matt Ricardo, Jen Brazil, Terry Prince, and John Palguda and lots more. Thank you for 20 years of uncompromised excellence. You kept every promise you told me at the beginning, and that's saying something for agents. You were honest, and you equipped me and my family with all the information we needed to make many very important life decisions during my career. We achieved so much together, but importantly, more importantly, we had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you. To my beautiful wife, Heather. There is no way I could have done this without you. It truly is amazing how positive, energetic, caring, and selfless you are every single day. It is infectious, and you make everyone else around you a better person. Being home every day now makes it even more impressive. You definitely have 
the hardest job in the world. There is nobody else I would have wanted to go on this ride with, and I'm so excited for the future. I love you. To my kids, Mackenzie, Hayden, Henry, and Benjamin, thank you for showing me that baseball is not the most important thing in the world. I am so grateful that I will be able to be around to watch you grow and be a part of whatever you end up being passionate about. Just remember, if you work hard, treat people like you want to be treated, and make good decisions, you can do anything you want. I love you. <laughs> to Heather's parents, Bob and Holly, and her sister Lindsay, and her husband Frank, I am so lucky to have such a great family unit. You guys have helped me and Heather so much over the years with the kids and many other things. There's no doubt in my mind that we couldn't have done this without your guys' help. Thank you. <laughs> to my parents, Keith and Cheryl, you guys made it possible for me to be here today. All your sacrifice, hard work, patience, leadership, love, and so much more left a lasting impact on me from the very beginning. The driving to all the games, the tournaments, the countless hours of baseball and all other sports in the yard until after dark sometimes. I'm lucky to have such a great parents as role models and now I can strive to be like you with my kids. Dad, thanks for raising me to be a good man and always lead by example. Mom, thanks for showing me what true strength and currents look like. I love you guys. To my brother, Sean, I was lucky to have such a great brother to grow up with. We did lots of things to get ever, but whatever it was, we competed. You are a big reason why I'm here today, and I'm happy I will be able to spend more time with you and your lovely wife, Andrea, and beautiful little girl, Kinsley. I'm so proud of what you have become as a man, husband, and father. I also have a little bit more time to play golf. So I'm finally gonna beat you, one time. Watch out. To the fans and so many people in the DC community, thank you for all the support along the way. It was one hell of a ride we went on together, and I can honestly say I wouldn't change a thing. I appreciate the support on the field, the 100 loss years, and the close to 100 win years, you guys were there. So many of you supported my Zims Foundation off the field, and I always thought that showed what type of community we have here. So many of you made time to support a cause that was very, very meaningful to me and most likely didn't affect you at all. But you guys always showed up to my events and for that I'll ever be grateful. So as I sat down and thought about what it meant and what I wanted to say about having your number retired, I was very humbling and it's one of the highest honors in sports. You think of all your heroes that have had their numbers retired. Players that, Im that you imitated when you played wiffle ball in the backyard. Mine were Cal Ripken Jr. and Chipper Jones. But as I thought more and more, I remembered so many stories of all the people that helped me get to this point, many of whom I mentioned previously. I feel like this day, this celebration, is as much for them as it is for me. Nobody who gets their number retired does it on their own. They all had an incredible, incredible support system, and I am no different. When you're playing, you rarely, if ever, take a time to step back and think about accomplishments, individual or team. As athletes, we are conditioned to take it one day at a time and never get too high or never get too low. You just keep grinding. 
So, honestly, it's been kind of nice to sit back and remember some of the good times over the last 17 years with so many of my closest friends this week. I hope that all of them and all of you in the stadium and all of you watching on TV, when you look up at that number 11, I hope it gives you the same feeling I get inside. You should, because it's as much yours as it is mine. The other thought I kept coming back to is how baseball parallels real life. It's one of the many reasons why I think our game is the best in the world. Failure is a huge part of our game and also a pretty big part of life. But it's not just the failing, it's the learning from your failures and making adjustments. Sometimes for us in between pitches or in real life on a day-to-day -day basis, like getting the carpool pickup time wrong on Monday <laughs> and being on time on Tuesday. It's a pretty quick adjustment. You also have to be a good teammate, day in and day out, even when things aren't going well. I always remember Desi saying one time, it's easy to be a good teammate when you're hitting 300. Try being one when you're hitting 220. And so I tried it a couple years. It was definitely harder. <laughs> and you obviously need to be a teammate in life as well, especially when you and your family go through tough times, which all of us do. I was blessed to be put in an awesome situation and surrounded by great teammates from the very beginning. So many of the veteran guys taught me how to respect the game, work hard, make good choices, and rep yourself, represent yourself and your organization with class. I took those lessons and used them my entire career and hopefully did a decent job of passing them along to the next generation of players. Quite simply, so many of the lessons I have learned through the game of baseball have made me the person I am today. And honestly, I think I'm more proud of that than anything I've ever accomplished on the field. So in closing, one of my favorite quotes is to whom much is given, much is expected. I love this because as a pro baseball player, I had the opportunity to do something every day that people dreamed about doing since they were a kid. I never forgot that. My dad used to say, there's always someone trying to take your job. So I showed up every day and prepared and worked and gave myself the best chance to succeed because, well, I didn't want anyone to take my job, but Honestly, I felt that I owed that type of effort to the game of baseball, and maybe more importantly, I owed it to all of you who watch me every day. A lot of you had that same dream about playing Major League Baseball. I got to do that for 17 years, and I never wanted to take that for granted, not even for one day. I didn't succeed all the time, not even close, but I could live with the failures because I knew I prepared and did everything I could to help the team win that day. Some days, the other guy or the other team was just better. I say all this because I think this is what defines my career. Sure, I was a pretty good player. Had some good years, did some cool stuff, hit some walk-off homers, won a World Series. But, there's always a but after the good stuff. I also got hurt a few times, had to change positions, and honestly, had some pretty mediocre seasons. I think number 11 is up there today because yes, I could play some ball, but more because I brought the right attitude, work ethic, commitment, and consistency every single year, day in and day out. And ultimately, I think this is what has earned the respect of everyone in the D.C. area. And to me, that is the greatest accomplishment any athlete can have. I knew I, knew I was given a great opportunity, but I also knew much was expected of me. And it was my honor to try and live up to those expectations 
for the last 17, 17 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Ryan Zimmerman.